Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And in this episode, Tracy Heinrichs is going to tell us all about her most recent stay in a wilderness cabin at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. So I'm really excited to hear about her experience there. Uh, I am joined this week on the panel by Tracy Heinrichs, agent consultant for Dreams Unlimited Travel. Hi, everyone. Christy Bennett, agent for Dreams Unlimited Travel. Hello. Allie Thomas-Reeves, agent for Dreams Unlimited Travel. Hi, everyone. Kevin Close, client services manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel. Hey, everybody. And back in the production facility, we have our producer, Craig Williams. Hello. Excellent. Thank you guys for being here. A um, couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago now, Tracy said she wanted to stay at the Fort Wilderness Cabins. And I said, Why? Is there something wrong with you? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, so we thought, well, this would be great to do for the show. This would be an excellent to hear her experiences. Um, it's been a very long time since I personally have been in a wilderness cabin. I mean, years and years and years. So I'm here to excited to hear what's new and what's changed. Um, I also know that uh, people are very excited about Fort Wilderness in general. This is a resort that gets a lot of repeat clients, or a lot of repeat visitors. Uh, people go year after year after year, especially at the holiday time. So um, we want to put things in the perspective that um, this is not an intense review of Fort Wilderness, correct? Oh, absolutely This correct. is more of your overview of your experience for this one stay. And then we'll talk a little bit about actually booking cabins at uh, Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. So Tracy, why don't you start us off and tell us all about it. Well, first of all, why I wanted to do it. Um, I, we've stayed at a lot, almost all the resorts now. We've, we've done a lot at Disney World. And we figured, I, they've always appealed to me. And at Christmas time, we've gone over and we, we had dinner at Trails End. And we've you know, walked around and saw the lights of the different campsites. And we, thought it, we think it's a really neat place. It looks really cool. And a lot of clients ask about the cabins. Should I stay there? Especially you know, clients with larger families. It's appealing. You, you have the kitchen. You have the bedroom. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go check it out and see. So that was the point of view. The point of view was of somebody who is a Disney fan, somebody who has stayed on Disney property, checking out the cabins um, and try, kind of trying to decide if this is something I could recommend to my clients or not. So I think we'll talk about my experience at the cabins and how what I thought and how it went. And then at the end, we'll kind of summarize it all as far as how we feel about you know, whether or not this is for everybody and who maybe would like it and who wouldn't. Excellent. I think that's a great way to approach it. I think a lot of times what we want to do is we want to show people our point of view from our vacations and our personal experience. It's not just about us sitting here reading facts and figures about a destination. What did we think of it? And what was our most recent experience? So sometimes it's a snapshot in time, too. It's not. Absolutely. And also what happens is that I find Disney more so than anywhere else in the world, I think. Each resort has a fan club. Every, you know, there's people who stay at the same resort all the time. Right. And these, there are people who can tell you every single detail of every single resort. And while as travel agents and experts on Disney World, we need to know a lot of information, there, we kind of have to filter it a little bit. We kind of right. have to, you know, there's only so much we can store. And then the rest of it, we're really good at knowing where to find. There's also minutia. Yeah. There's stuff that only appeals to the diehard fan. That's true. That wouldn't affect yeah. your decision to stay there or not. And I think the cabins or the Fort Wilderness campground in general uh, probably has some of the larger group diehard fans that I've seen. I know there's there's a group over on the Diz boards. Um, you know, de there's a, a board over there dedicated to the campgrounds. It's a whole different world. And having just gotten a glimpse of it over the course of a long weekend... It was pretty exciting. There's a lot going on over there. And I know our folks love it. Pete goes yeah. over and loves to stay there. He has a great time. So I know Corey and Julie and the kids enjoy it. Yeah. They have a great time. So let's start at the beginning. What do you do when you arrive? So when you first arrive, there's a there's a check in building, just like, you know, the check in lobby at the outpost building. Uh, this is where you pull up and you start. Now this is assuming a cabin stay. If you were pulling a trailer or an R V, there are drive through uh, check in uh, areas where you would not necessarily go to the outpost and so if you were taking magical express this is also where you would be dropped off and your check-in will be just like any other resort you know you'll just you'll get your magic bands or if you already have your magic bands i always say get your magic bands because i'm canadian and they don't ship them to me so part of my arrival is getting them but 
So you'll do all of that. You'll set up your credit card and everything that you would normally do for a resort stay. Has this resort been revamped with the new uh, front desk where the cast members can come out from behind, or is it still the old front desk? I believe it was still the old front desk. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a much smaller area than you're used to. Like, you walk into a Disney resort, it's a large lobby right. area. This is not that. This is a very small contained area with, you know, I think there were spots maybe for three to five, maybe, no, probably four or five cast members. Wow, that is small. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a much smaller area. And so you have to remember, for the most part, people checking in here are just people using the cabins. So the, you're, you're talking a lot less uh, inventory than you are talking a resort with thousands of rooms. Excellent. Okay. Um, so then we, we, for this particular stay, we're just staying in a cabin, which will come no surprise to anybody who knows me. I was not camping. Um, <laughs> in fact, cabin, camping, that's a, probably as close as I'll get. That is close as you get? Yeah, maybe. Um, so the cabin itself, when you first pull up to the cabin, you can actually park right at the cabin, which was a big plus for us. We always have a car. So you can park. You can see pull up right there. There was enough room for you know, the car and the golf cart was, was out there. Um, and outside on that patio, there was a picnic table. So a really nice outdoor space. There was a lot of shade and, uh, it was, it was really nice. Like it was, it was a nice place to be outside of your, of being inside the cabin. So outside of there, there's also a grill, a charcoal grill. So we actually did grill one night. Um, and it looks pretty primitive. I wasn't exactly sure what to do with it. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> I, mean, really where do you, I was like, I couldn't find Where's the on button. Right? I couldn't find the start button. I didn't know where the propane tank went. It was there was no rotisserie. I don't know. I was definitely out of my element. But luckily, I was with some professionals who knew exactly what to do and took charge. Chris, go out there yeah. with his bad leg. Yeah, I did. Stand in yeah, the hop out there. Hop out there. And get it done. So he, you know, we did grill one night. Now they don't include any barbecue utensils, which I thought was surprising. So there was nothing oh. like that because the kitchen is quite well stocked. But there were no barbecue utensils. But we managed just fine. So then once you come into the cabin, actually, Craig, maybe maybe before I talk about the inside of the cabin, show some of our right, nice so, pictures. Yeah. First, we'll show my video. Yeah, Tracy had uh, has put together a video. <laughs> and first of all, let me say this. I, it was a longer video. It looked a little horror story-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, I enlisted the help of my son, and, and, and I got to say, my son finally did some editing on it, and... I didn't give him much to work with. Uh, John had taken a crack at it. Craig had looked at it. Uh, it's bad. Yeah, at first, so <laughs> at first we weren't going to use it because it kind of looks like a trailer for Blair Witch 2. <laughs> it's a little, you know, the cabin in the woods. The call's coming from inside the cabin. But we're going to give it a try. And I do want to warn people, if you get seasick, yeah. you might want to look careful. away. You may the good news is it's not that long. Put on some ha- motion bands before it starts. We do appreciate Tracy putting it together, and, though. We but this is why some, we hire professionals to do things like right. this. We're having fun at her expense, but let's see if we can uh, we can all stomach it together. <laughs> and for those of you who are just listening to us, we will uh, give a little talk over it so that you can know that. So when you first walk in, up. you can see you have the kitchen area. And then, see, it is very Blair Witches. I'm t- I did not lie. And then you have the living room. That sofa actually pulls out to make a bed. And you can see, you know, six people at this little table. This is where it gets really creepy. <laughs> this is the bathroom. Yeah. And you can see in here the queen-size bed with the bunk beds. Oh. And then at the end, there's a closet. Nothing pops out of the closet, so don't be scared. <laughs> and so my poor Is that son- it? That's it. That's the whole video. You were making it sound like I was going to pass out or something. Well, because we edited it down. It was much longer. It was me literally slow walking all the way through the cabin. However, before she did the video, someone hobbled her. Because it was like... (laughs) Through the cabin. I was like, holy smokes, what's going on? No, my son says that was just stepping movement. My son was definitely very kind to me. This is what... (laughs) he's, He's a professional. And so please, you know... Don't judge that outcome by him because he did not have anything to work with. <laughs> no, I actually think it was really cool. So just to kind, nice just wanted to kind of give you an overview because of the yeah. way it all flows. And um, yeah. So and, now let's look at the real pictures. So now let's look at pictures that will tell us. <laughs> that don't move. That don't move. <laughs> they look a little less creepy. So this is the kitchen. As you can see, um, you know, full size fridge. It's got uh, two burner cooktop. There isn't a stove, or I'm sorry, there isn't an oven. I should say. Now, the microwave above the cooktop is a confection, and I think you could do some fancy things in it. Again, a little bit out of my element. <laughs> but Chris! <laughs> Come and work the microwave. Have, uh, and you can see there's a toaster, a dishwasher, 
very convenient and certainly, certainly how I would rough it on a regular basis. <laughs> this was camping for me. Um, so then after, right from the kitchen, it's like kind of when you first walk in, there's all one room. And you have to think about this as, as a narrow, you know, it's like, it's like a trailer. It's like a motorhome, an RV. So it is narrow. It's long and narrow. So this is the living room area. And as I said, that sofa does pull out and make what, you know, we actually had somebody sleep on it, and they said it, it really was fairly comfortable. Is it a queen-size sleeper? It's hard they to call it a double. I think it would be somewhere. But it wasn't quite as small as a double, but I don't think you could call it a okay. queen either. Um, but it's. I think Disney's using this type in a lot of their resorts where it doesn't have the slats going through the bottom. It's a solid surface. So it was definitely doable. Did and that fold out, or does it just pull out and then the back lay down? No, it pulls out like a regular oh, okay. sofa, yeah. Um, and then from there, you, you know, you walk down the hallway into the bathroom. There is only one bathroom. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a standard all-in-one shower there, as you can see. Nothing now, fancy. Is that a tub with it? It's hard to tell. It is, yeah. There was a tub. And it was a little bit high. You know, we had Chris with accessibility issues. Um, but we had asked for a shower seat, at least. And they made sure that that was available to us. So once we got him in it was all right but the shower seat because of it's one of those you know have you ever seen a remodel where they kind of put this over what was mm -hmm. already existing yeah. it was a very small space it was less than ideal yeah this but, is a tub shower insert so yes, it's not yeah right, and i would say it. there are accessible cabins um we didn't get one because you know he could walk and stuff so right. he didn't get a fully accessible cabin yeah, accessible but there cabins are have fully accessible cabins if needed that's right, right. They have a ramp instead of the yeah. stairs. And, the and then in the bedroom, shower. there was the queen bed and bunk beds. So this cabin can sleep six people. Now, as you can see, though, four of those people are in one room. <laughs> and very close. And very close. How close those bunk beds. Though. Very <laughs> close. This is and not about privacy. No. And the other thing that struck me was it was like it was a long time since I had slept up against the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it was something that when we went, I was like, oh. And until it was bedtime, I was like, oh, okay, who gets the wall? So the first night I got it, that was a bad idea. I'm of the age now where I go to the bathroom <laughs> during the night. So that didn't work so well for us. So, you know, there's, there's four of you in that room. So that's something to keep in mind when you think of a bedroom. It's not very private, mom and dad. I also believe, too, you know, people come on vacation. It's okay. Yeah. It's and okay the thing is, I wrote this, and I'll talk about this a little bit at the end. Our entire jobs are about managing expectations. Right. It's not for me to say that this is not good for you or this wouldn't work for you or this is what you should do. It's me telling you exactly what to expect well, and you deciding what you can live with. Also, if you're sharing just a standard hotel room at you're Disney right. with your kids, exactly. there's two beds in a room. Yeah. So it's not exactly. like, I think the word bedroom right. makes it, you assume that That's right. it's some sort of privacy, like if two couples were sharing it. Well, somebody's going to have that sofa sleeper if you want privacy. This and is... All of the cabins have been renovated. Um, I do want, my understanding is prior to this that that bed used to be a double. Mm -hmm. I actually don't know that they've been renovated so much as been replaced because what they were doing was they were selling off. You Only could, some. There were some that were replaced um, completely is my understanding and the rest of the cabins were just renovated. So there was a there was one loop where they, I believe what happened, again, all of you out there who are right, diehards and know everything about this resort, I forgive you, forgive me. But just let that go then, because I thought they were all replaced, and I could be no, wrong. No, there weren't. There was, I think what they did was they took one loop out and made it something else, and they sold those cabins off. So these have all been renovated. Uh, there are special cabin loops. And then there's two cabins that were down by everything else in the 100 loop. And I was like, what's up with those cabins? And I asked at the front desk, and they tell me that if they have um, you know, special guests or sometimes VPs or they'll stay in one of those cabins. Um, and if they are available when you check in, you can ask for one. What level do you have to be to be the cabin VIP? <laughs> Pete. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not even going to go because there's a lot of jokes we can make, but we're not. What's the next picture, Craig? I got in trouble. Because I get in trouble. It's so a this TV. Is, so there's, this is the other half of the bedroom. So this is what you're looking at if you're laying in bed. Oh. So you have the closet in the middle behind that curtain. And you had seen it in my top notch video when the curtain was pulled back. And Did you could it? see that there was a safe in there and stuff. So this is, the, uh, this is the closet. And keep in mind, this is the only closet for the cabin. So I found storage was a little bit of an issue like from that point of view. There were some drawers out in the living room. So you know, on the either side of the window, there was some storage out there. Um, and beside there, you have the TV with some drawers underneath it. To the left of that, you can't really see it. But there's another cabinet similar to what the TV is on. And it actually had the hairdryer and stuff over there with a mirror. 
So it was a neat little area where you oh. could stand and, and do a, you know, a little bit of that. Right. A little bit of that, you know, where you blow dry your hair. <laughs> and it's, I think that was the last of the inside of the cabins, right? So that's basically the cabin. I mean, the cabin is fully, the kitchen is fully stocked, has utensils and dishes, and there were some pots and pans, and we certainly were able to, you know, to, to prepare a couple meals there. And we had done a stop at the grocery store on our way, and we had gotten stuff to make s'mores, of course. Uh, so if you're there's looking Wi-Fi for... in the cabin. Yeah. If you're looking for something above just a hotel room, if yes. you're looking for that sort of um, uh, what a efficiency type yep. of thing, I think this fits, uh, is a, it does. a niche. It does. And for people That's who, right. like me, who really enjoyed the whole campground aspect, but probably won't be in a tent anytime soon, this was a nice intermediate step for me. Right. The other thing is the cabins have full housekeeping. So... Nobody's coming to your tent to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> these are, making up your, your I've actually floor. stayed in this before, and I think these are great for a family. If you put the maximum of eight people in there... Six. Six. It's going to be crowded. Yeah. It's going to be tight. So you said Wi-Fi is available. Yep. It's, there's Wi-Fi throughout. Just like, How was the Wi-Fi? Was we, I strong? didn't have any issue. As you know, I'm, I'm working whenever I'm traveling, and I'm using the Internet a lot, and I didn't notice it any better or worse than any of the Disney Resort rooms I've been in. So I thought it was definitely doable. Um, as far as pricing on the cabin, I mean, it's going to vary greatly from season. Allie, I think you have some prices. Yeah, I priced um, for next August, just around the same time frame that you stayed this year, and it was coming out about three eighty a night with tax included. Yeah, and that's regular rack rate. So you yes. know there might be other discounts applicable. Um, Disney categorizes these as kind of like in the moderate category. I yeah. I don't think that's necessarily right because they don't price yeah, near if a you moderate. price it out it it prices very similar to wilderness lodge right closer to that than yeah. to a, a moderate however are you comparing two rooms at wilderness lodge no to just one, no, no, just just one. one. So that's, yeah so that's, that's your the, difference right. yeah that's where the difference comes and in. then i did touch on a little on the fact that is this is a campground there are many campsites and we in the evening one of the things we like to do was drive around the campsite loops there is a whole world out there that I know nothing about. It fascinates me, strictly from a spectator point of view. But there are people who clearly, this is their preferred way of vacationing. So when you pull up to their campsite and you see how it's prepared and all the conveniences they have and how they have it all laid out, and I thought the campsites looked very well maintained. I thought um, it's it's just a fascinating world. Did you look, you have some pricing on the campsites? I Allie? do. Um, if you just have a tent or like a pop up style, or I guess it's a camper, um, you know, it only runs like sixty two dollars a night, um, and that's with tax included. And that's uh, you'd have like a picnic table, a small grill, and electrical outlets. You don't have the full hookup, um, which would have the sewage hookup. If you upgrade to the sewage hookup, it goes to about eighty five a night. So it's, I mean, it's really affordable. And then um, if you have a premium campsite for the extra large RVs, uh, it goes up to about 80, well, excuse me, 93 a night. So, you, and I think each campsite, you can put up to 10 people on them. Yeah, they can so sleep up to 10. So if you're, yeah, and so, and I think you can put more than one RV or tent, like a combination of up to two. You can do, yeah, it says that you can do a pop-up style or two tents or one pop-up, one tent. Yeah. With all fits. And same thing with the RV. So if you think about it, at under $100 a night, if this is your preferred way of traveling and you already have your RV or your, t your, your tent and this is what you do, it's kind of a neat way to be on site. I'm going to say this, though. I am certainly not an expert in camping, so please do not take this as face value. What? <laughs> In comparison to camping in other places, this is actually quite expensive. You know, there are campsites near Disney that would be much less than this. I think amenities, though, at this. Yes. Right. I mean, you're obviously talking more. about being I mean, on Disney property and all that stuff. And but then the same could be said for hotels. Exactly. I think the restroom and shower and laundry area, it's right. air conditioned. And I've actually walked into those before, and they're really nice and clean. And, clean. and for me to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was very surprised with the comfort stations. Yeah. Because that was a big thing for me. And I thought... I just, I, as I said, I don't frequent a lot of campgrounds, so I have very little to compare it to. But this just seemed like if I ever was to venture into camping, <laughs> this might be where I would Nessie, do I think it. Wilderness Lodge is camping. <laughs> <laughs> and so I actually, I joke about it, but one of the things you can do is there's companies mm -hmm. near Disney that rent 
trailers or RVs. Absolutely. And they will come and they will set it up and you reserve the lot. We actually think we're going to do this. Um, so that'll be a whole different show when I finally do that. It's going to be great. Um, I also think people, uh, I think bec- people who use these campground and these tent sites, I think they tend to stay longer, don't they? I think so. I think that's why it they set up these little compounds. It certainly seemed to me, that's right, it certainly seemed to me the way that a lot of these sites were set up, that this was, these were people coming in for a couple weeks. These were people who, some, many of them had their own golf carts. They had their own, like, they were professionals. They were really, <laughs> they <shouldn't> like, <laughs> and, and, and I say that with the utmost respect. Like, I would. They're not living out of a roll-on suitcase. No, 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 they were. It was really, really fascinating. So this whole setting up the RV thing, that one of the reasons it appeals to me is because if you do if you, a lot of the campsites, you can bring a pet. You can bring your dog. They have an, like a dog area. They have an off-leash dog park. They've got trails where you can take the dog. And so I think we're actually going to do that. We're actually going to come down. We're going to stay with the dog. And I want to come visit and meet yeah, the dog. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to see the video of that. Yeah. <laughs> that will be very Blair Witchy. <laughs> So I thought, you know, as far as the cabin goes, you know, there you have it. The campsites are there. Let's talk about some of the other things that are available. So with transportation, um, what we did, I referenced a golf cart a couple times. We had rented a golf cart, and we had organized that before we left home. My understanding was if you waited till you got on site, that often they were sold out. And that was our experience. When we got there, there was a sign to say there's no golf carts available. So we had rented it as soon as we booked the cabin. We had reserved it. And do you have to pay for it then? You or do. You? No, you know, I'm sorry. You don't have to pay for it. When you reserve it, you pay for it on site. Gotcha. It's added to your... Yeah. But you, we had to give them a credit card to guarantee it. And it was 60 around $60 a day plus tax, and that was for a four-seater. I know they did have some six-seaters. They were a little bit more, um, but we only had the four. And uh, you have to be 16. You have to be licensed to drive it. Uh, you can't have kids on your lap. You can't, you know, there's a lot of rules around them. You get, you get a lot of, I found when we checked in here, we had a lot more information than any other resort about where everything was, but a lot of rules around things like carts and outside vehicles and stuff. And setting fire to things. Yes, exactly. That was not, that was discouraged. <laughs> um, you can also, my understanding, you can rent carts from offsite, but I don't know how many years ago it was, but Disney nixed that. Whereas they're not allowing people to come on site and deliver golf carts anymore. So you really, the only way to have it for sure and have it delivered is to have it done by Disney. Um, so you rent it from there for their $60 a day. And there was no discount. As far as I could tell, I asked if there were multiple day discounts or anything. And there wasn't for that. Um, and Did you, then, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Did you find the golf cart a necessity? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We found that it was, we used the golf cart a lot. Because you drive in and they really encourage you to only to use your car when you're coming and going. Okay. Because there's so much traffic in the campgrounds, so many golf carts, people walking, people on bikes. Okay. So to add all of that automobile traffic as well is a lot. So they ask that you use your car for coming and going only. Uh, we found like where our loop was and where the cabin was, we were really far away from everything. Okay. So we would have had to either use the internal bus system, mm-hmm. so they do have that, or this golf cart, which gave us complete freedom. And then there were some um, areas where you could only go with a golf cart. And every, you know, the stores, the re- everywhere we went in the campground had golf cart parking. You could also, there's a whole golf cart parking area by the buses. So we would take the golf cart to get the bus to go to the parks okay. or I've to stayed, the marina. Yeah, I've stayed twice. And yeah. I mean, you essentially, if you're you're pricing out the resort, you might as well just add That's the $60 I really on think. right away. I think staying there without the golf cart would be tough. I, in my I wouldn't opinion. do it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it made it more civilized for yeah. me <laughs> to have the golf cart. Um, and then one thing about the off-site golf carts, Disney, you can bring one on yourself. So if you wanted to meet one of these off-site companies outside of Disney property, they do make arrangements um, with you to pull it in. My understanding is probably at least half the price of what Disney's charging. Our but you would have to have the facility to be able to do that. There are people on their own. Yes, seen them there was their, tons, yeah. tons of that. So yeah, Loaded on top of their exactly. RV thingy. Other transportation options. Christy, did you get... Uh, yes, if you are staying at Fort Wilderness in order to get to all of the theme parks, you use the internal buses to go to the front outpost area and there is a bus that goes to all of the theme parks the water parks except magic kingdom and disney springs um magic kingdom you take a boat 
you go um, over towards the settlement post, which is where the hoop de doo uh, is located. You walk out to the pier, and then you're going to have uh, two different boat choices. There's one that goes straight to the Magic Kingdom, and then there's one that will also stop at the uh, Wilderness Lodge and the Contemporary. And there's, I mentioned the internal buses. Yes. There's different internal bus routes, so it's not like it's one bu- you know, one route that goes all the way through the whole entire campground. Like, I think the cabins have one. Yes. You know, certain campsite loops will have one. And so there's, but it all takes time. And that's why we thought the golf <laughs> cart was such a necessity. And also having our own car, like we rented a car. And having a car where you could pull up and park at your cabin, to me, having a car is almost a necessity here. You know, whether you're renting or whether you've dr- you've driven from your home, I think having a car, trying to do this with Magical Express and not having a vehicle, I don't know that that would be the same vacation. You know, just think when you Magical Express drops you off at the outpost with all your bags and you check in, now you have to go to your cabin loop, <laughs> which is a ways away. It's not like walking to your resort room. Don't they have luggage delivery? They they have luggage delivery if you okay. used it. Um, but they also will, like if available, they'll have some of their luggage valets maybe help, like take you on one of their golf carts to your cabin that first time and you may be able to arrange with them. I had asked if that was something that was available and it said based on availability, based on how busy everybody is. Um, and then let's talk about dining. So we've dined at the at the camp, I think a lot of people have dined at the campground, even if you're not staying there. Um, they have a couple of quick service options. They have the meadow snack bar, um, and then they have the they have like a chuck wagon thing that happens at the campfire, mm-hmm. where you can pick up some light things. Uh, Trails and buffets here. Um, I don't think that's the, is, is it. This is the official word. Trails and buffet. Trails that's what and I was, restaurant. Thank you. I just frontier fixins and friendly folk. <laughs> <laughs> you know how he knows that? It's on the picture behind your head. <laughs> I was so impressed, too. Um, so at the Trails End, they do buffet, breakfast, and dinner. But on the weekends, they do a brunch. So that's what we had tried, the brunch. And it was really good. Like, I thought. And I think, like, really good value, like, good food offerings. We really enjoy it. We've, as I said, we've been there many times for other meals. But I thought the brunch was well done. And um, during the week at lunchtime, they do uh, just, like, a la carte menu. It's not a buffet then. Hoopty Doo's here. Mickey's Backyard Barbecue is here. Um, they also have a takeout window. So at Trails End, there's a like a takeout counter, and they do breakfast and dinner. And so you get, they have a menu that you can take. They told us at the front desk that you could call from your cabin and pre-order and just go pick it up. They told me at the counter that that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be calling us. <laughs> I know. And so, because when I picked up the menu, I had asked her about that. I said I was told that at the front desk that we could call from the cabin, and I couldn't find a number on the phone for our food. <laughs> and she said, no. She goes, well, that's why everybody keeps asking us. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, apparently you can. So, you know, two, two people, two stories, somewhere in there lies the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was pretty cool. Like, one of the things that they I noticed they had was... Um, they have like takeout fried chicken. I like their fried chicken. The fried chicken's kind yeah. of legendary. Yeah, like so you that. get like eight pieces of fried chicken, a couple sides, and some cornbread, and I think it was like twenty three dollars. Yep. Hmm. That's not a bad meal at all to take back to That's your cool. cabin or your campsite. So oh, that was pretty cool. I'm never eating fried chicken in a tent. I just want to <laughs> <laughs> out of a bucket in a tent. <laughs> yeah. There's also tons of recreation <laughs> options here, like. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on here. Um, Fort Wilderness, it's surrounded by water. So a lot of their recreation is based on playing in the lake, playing in the pool, fishing. Don't play in the lake. No, don't play in the lake. But you can (laughs) ride a boat in the lake. Um, They do offer, you know, the water skiing, the tubing, wakeboarding, a lot of fishing excursions. You can either do cane pole fishing, which I'm not quite sure. That's the, I think, isn't that the old-fashioned kind? We just I believe with so. With the pool and the, oh, and the string? And, yeah. Which yeah. <laughs> there was a great... There's very little house on the prairie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a great area. We had, up, we had gone up around the bike rental area, and there was, like, you look across the lake, and there, and there was, like, people literally just standing there with their pole fishing. I mean, it, it really it's is a really different neat. world when you're in there. Yes. And it's they pretty do much it. what fishing is. Yeah, but you don't expect that in the middle of Disney World. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they do also offer archery, 
which I think is really, really cool. They have trail rides. And for little kids, they do offer pony rides, and you go in a cute little circle. Um, one of the things that's really cool is the little tiny horses that pull Cinderella's carriage for the weddings. The horses are all there. So that, I think, is really neat. And, and the archery? To ride them. In the archery area? <laughs> in yeah. the trail ride. Oh, you have to fast. go to Circle D Ranch. <laughs> you don't really... want to get there. Like but the also, the level. Headless Horseman's horse is also kept there. Oh. So you can actually go visit him as well. And it's kind of neat. Swimming pools? Swimming pools, there's Movies, two. Movie stars? <laughs> I just Again, adore you're dating a yourselves. penthouse view. Again, just... you're dating yourselves. <laughs> No, we're outing ourselves. <laughs> and quote Green Acres, you are oh. gay. Um, let's go through some of these pictures. You had some really good pictures up that we didn't get a chance to see uh, for the recreation. It's really exciting. They don't shake. <laughs> Aww. Poor Tracy. Sorry, Craig, I threw that at you, and you weren't ready. And my computer's frozen, so. Oh, all right. Do they have um, bike rentals, like, right there? They do. They do. They have bike rentals. They also have the little safety seats for the little kids. You can strap them on the back. Can you rent them for the whole time you're there, do you know? Um, like, could you keep it I believe it's cabin? just daily. Daily. Do they still offer the Segway tours? They do. They do offer those, yeah. They also have two pools, so they had the one pool. This is the picture I'm hoping you can put up. Oh, okay. Oh, the that's the, the campfire sing-along area. I think that's a really well-done area. It looks like they, they we didn't watched go, the crucible there. We didn't it? go there at night, <laughs> but... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> for less jaded people, it looks like a really fun place. Sure. <laughs> so Chip and Dale come, and they do a sing-along, and then after that, they show a movie. And there Chip were also were there. stadium <laughs> seats. And you notice how I just keep talking. I just keep ignoring that's that right. it's happening. Interrupting Canadian. Uh, yeah. There's... Um, there's there's movies there? stadium seating yes. and stuff, so it is a really neat area. Look at how straight those chairbacks are. <laughs> well, um, one of the things I wanted to note with the campfire, you do have to purchase your marshmallows or your s'mores kits, however you want to do it. Get you. The marshmallows are four ninety nine a bag, and each little stick is fifty nine cents. Or you can use a snack credit. And you can get the marshmallows and some sticks. If you want to do the whole kit and caboodle for um, s'mores, they're nine ninety nine, and they do this nightly. It is every night, and yes, there's a movie. When I stayed there, s'mores were included. So that's, not that's anymore. So you know, you're <laughs> dating you yourself. Did you have to go find your I was stick? Uh, actually, yeah, we did have to. Like, they had them, but you could bring your own if you wanted to. <laughs> I, when, I was stick, younger when we P-Y-O-S. stayed there, <laughs> and I wanted to go do that every night. Like, we'd be at the park, and I'd be like, "Can we just go back to the campfire?" Like, so when yeah. you're younger, you yeah, know, exactly. It's <laughs> really popular. Yeah, it really is true. I have clients that stay at other resorts. Can yep. we go to? The, can, y- yeah, yes, absolutely. anybody can go to the campfire, and you do not have to be staying at Fort Wilderness. It's free. It's a great place to see Chip and Dale, and it's fun. It was. Yeah. So they have the two swimming pools. There's the one that has the the theme slot, like the slide. Yes, at that everything. one's at the Meadow Trading Post. That's okay. the larger of the two. Um, the other pool is their quiet pool, and they uh, that one's more over by the cabin loops. Strongly discourage screaming and jumping and yelling, which that's good. That's those are my mottos as well. So <laughs> <laughs> they should be discouraged everywhere. Yes, especially on cruise ships. Uh, there's um, a couple gift shops here. Mm-hmm. So there's the one down at Settlement Trading Post, and that's your souvenirs and your groceries and your alcohol. Kind of a little bit of a typical Disney gift shop. And then there's the one over at the Meadow Trading Post. This has all of that, plus this is more, you know, your camping supplies. You're going to get your propane tanks refilled here. Um, but I still couldn't find the hookup on that charcoal grill for the propane <laughs> tank, so it didn't help. <laughs> Uh, I think they even rent videos there. They have like a deli and of what how to hook up your campsite, <laughs> yeah. how to hook up your grill, how to, how to, charcoal how to put grill. your tent together. I think we should set Tracy up on the next Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should just put cameras on her on a pop up tent oh campsite God. and watch her I, slowly devolve. I would suggest not using audio. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Lord of the Flies. So I mean, overall, I have to tell you, I know we joke, but I really loved this place. Right. I love this place from the point of view of somebody who feels like she's kind of been there, done that in a lot of Disney World. I've stayed at a lot of the resorts. I still love it. Don't get me wrong. I love Disney. I'm still coming several times a year. But this was something outside of that. So I could still go to the parks, which we did. But we found we wanted to be in the parks less because we wanted to be back at the campground. We wanted to, you know, riding around the golf cart at night was an activity. (laughs) Like, this is something you planned and wanted to do. Um, you know, it just felt like such a peaceful 
place to be. And when you see everybody else and those that are there camping and those that are in cabins, it just was a really fun place to be. One of the things we love about Disney is there's such a diversity of things to do. Exactly. And there's something for everybody. Right. So we might joke around about this is not our way of doing it. The fact that it's there for people who want to do it and it's affordable and no, it's... I've done it. It's, I joke about not wanting to do it, but I, I right. stayed at the camp. Yeah. And I'll say this. While I say I loved it, I had a great time, and I, I will do it again. I will go. I want to come longer and stay in the cabin. I mentioned I want to get do the RV thing and stay in a campsite. I am going to do that. Um, but I don't think this is for everybody. I yeah, do not. Absolutely. I think I would be very selective for those of my clients that I would recommend this to. I think there's some... It's a very different Walt Disney World experience. It is. It and always I think, has been. I think if your plan is you're coming to Disney World, I think if you're a first-timer, I don't think you should be at the cabins. Um, I think you're going to spend so much time in the parks, and there's so much for you to see and do and to get in in your first trip that you don't have time for the extra logistics t- staying in a cabin takes, and you also don't have time than to enjoy all the benefits of being at the campground because you've got other places to be. I think this is more geared to the somebody who's been there, done that, or maybe even if you're coming as a multi-generational family. So maybe grandma and grandpa are coming with you and grandma and grandpa would enjoy more of the staying back and, and the campground experience while you're off with the kids, perhaps. Um, but I think, I mentioned the car. I, I could not do this without a car. I think having a car, being able to park the car right at your cabin was a big plus for us, whether you're renting. And there are some people who the idea of renting a car on a Disney vacation right. is what? Kind of like that's, well, yeah. It's also having a car there is, a, you said there's not a lot of storage. So if you empty your suitcases, storing your suitcases in the yeah. car is a good there idea. There was one thing. We could put the suitcases mm, under the bed, idea. I should say that. Um, and I believe that's a new thing as well. I think with the new beds that they've put in, they're a little bit higher. So we were able to store our suitcases under the bed, just before I forget. There are some people who are indoors people. Yeah. I'm an indoor person. I just am. I like my air conditioning. I like carpeted hallways. I like room service. And then there are people who enjoy having yeah. an outdoor experience. And the cabins were air conditioned. Did I not? I did not say that. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, but the hallways to the air conditioning were not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those loops were not. So one um, of the things that happens is when you are pricing out a Disney vacation and you put in five people or six people, this will pop up. It will. This will pop up as an option for you to book it. And I think it's important that people know it's not like booking a regular hotel room. It's not. And I think you. there are logistics involved. We talked about the internal bus system, and we talked about how you get to the parks if you don't have a car. Um, the internal bus system, even though there's different, there's different sections, um, it's still a long time driving through. If you think about that bus, it has to stop at multiple stops. It's dealing with other traffic. It's dealing with golf carts and people walking and people on bikes. So there's a length of time involved in moving that bus throughout to get to the main bus stop where now you're going to go to a park. Right. So I think there's some logistics involved and I don't think it's for everybody. I think you want to think about how you're traveling, how much time you want to spend in the parks. And if you are a first timer and you only plan on spending a couple of days in the park and your resort to where you're staying is very important, then maybe. But I think it, you definitely want to have a conversation with your travel agent about whether or not yeah, this uh, isn't the cabin as convenient is, as a monorail resort. It's, not, it's just not. No, no, not even as convenient as a value resort, really, in a lot of cases. However, there are people who think that that's fine. For Absolutely, sixty something dollars to do a campsite and you know yeah. take the yeah. transportation and not rent a car. That's maybe the way they can afford to come to Disney. Well, I think if they're coming with a campsite, they've got a car because they had to get their tent and, and stuff hiked here. Down I <laughs> four, yeah. hitchhiked their way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they. I'm minutes. pretty sure most of them have come. Like, I wonder if Magical Express will take you and your camping equipment. We should they look might. Into that. They, they might. might. You never know. I have but a lot from, of clients that um, go over there to go to like the Hoop Dee Doo when they're staying at another hotel, and then for maybe their second or third trip, they'll they'll ask me about it, and they'll be like, "Hey, we saw there was a lot to do there," and so it's definitely something I think for a repeat client or a yeah. repeat visitor. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. it's just a conversation. I, I never want to talk anybody out of anything. I always feel like our job is about managing expectations. And so I think if most people are disappointed when their expectations are not met. So if your expectations are managed going in, then you really know what to expect and whether or not this is for you. Because nobody knows your family like you do and whether or not this is your idea. So this was kind of the point. I kind of wanted to bring a glimpse of this world to those like me who have only seen it from the outside. Right. 
And that was really the point. Or curious about it. I've seen yep. this. It's, it's been exactly. offered to me or I see it when I'm on the boat. Right. You know, what is it about? Yeah. I think one of the things worth mentioning, and this was when we stayed there as a family several years ago, this was one of the little things that bothered me. You're in the middle of the woods. You're in Florida. There is wildlife everywhere. Um, when we stayed there, it was probably seven years ago, there was a little note card when you first opened oh, the yeah. door. And the note card says, please be aware of your surroundings. You are in the middle of the Florida wilderness. You will encounter, may encounter snakes, rats. No, thank you. Bears. I, yeah, oh, my. Um, you <laughs> never know what you're going to see. So yeah. you, there's deer absolutely everywhere. There's armadillo. There's raccoons. Don't touch them. They're not Disney raccoons. They are, they are wild. Um, this, this kind of falls back with the people that go on a Disney cruise at Castaway. I can't believe the fish are real in the ocean. I'm in a Disney, you know. It, it, no, it, this, there is wildlife there. There is. And it's real. And you still have to treat this like it's a campsite. You right. do. You can't leave right. your trash leave out. Your, right. Exactly, because yeah. the raccoons will eat it. And they also, um, you know, your packing list is different coming here. You know, you're bringing bug spray. Mm-hmm. I was going to like ask that. you about that. How recently did you do this? It was before the putting bug spray everywhere. So I assume they're putting um, mosquito repellent in I would the assume they are. I mean, they put it in our room every, when we were at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. So right. Every yeah. resort now is getting it. So Just I assume the off. campground is as well. Excellent. All right. Thank you guys so much, Tracy. Thank you very much for doing that. I, was, I learned a lot about Fort Wilderness cabins and things <laughs> that happen over there at the and place. Things. That stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys at home for listening and watching. We truly appreciate it. And we hope you have a great week. And we hope you have a great vacation. <laughs>